Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing how I decorated our home for the autumn season. One of the first things I did was to start making our autumn supply of scented candles. Back in August I shared a full video on what I use and how exactly I make my own scented candles at home so I'll leave a link to that video down in the description box below for anyone who might be interested in making their own scented candles. I really enjoy this whole process, it's definitely become a regular hobby of mine and I love being able to control exactly what goes into each candle so you can remove any nasties and control the intensity of the scent so that it suits you and your household. Now I like really big candles so I only needed to make three for various areas in the house and these will last us up until winter time when I'll then make some more festive scented candles for the holiday season. So once the wax was poured into my vessels I needed to leave them to cure in a cool spot for at least a couple of weeks. So this is why I make my candles a couple of weeks before a new season begins so that they're ready to light. On to flowers, and I've recently been trying out Freddy's flowers. This was the arrangement from the previous week, which is full of beautiful autumnal colours, so I decided it would be perfect for on the console table of our entrance area, so that every time when we come home, or we have a visitor, or a delivery, we're all greeted with these seasonal beauties. With Freddy's flowers, you can have fresh seasonal flowers delivered to your door on a weekly basis. But if that doesn't suit you, you can also choose how often you'd like to receive your boxes and skip deliveries using the easy online calendar. Plus, you can pause or cancel at any time. Once your box of Freddy's flowers arrives, you can set aside some me time and escape the stresses of everyday life because you get to arrange the flowers yourself. Flower arranging is said to boost your mood and reduce stress and anxiety. And if you don't have the creative gene, that's okay. In your box of Freddy's flowers, you'll receive a guide with all the instruction you need to create a beautiful arrangement for your home. As an added bonus, Freddy's Flowers is a carbon neutral business and they only use recyclable packaging. They also minimise their waste by growing their flowers to order. So once I unboxed my flowers and got my guide to follow, I added some water to my classic vase, which you guys can actually get for free as well as 50% off your first two deliveries by using my unique discount code and link down in the description box below. You'll get plenty of tips and tricks from Freddy on how to keep your arrangement looking fresh for longer, but the flowers you get from Freddy's flowers last longer than any other because they're sourced directly from the growers and arrive in bud. This means they spend longer brightening up your home rather than being sat in the back of a van or in a shop. So in turn, you're getting much more for your money. It was last September that we moved into this house and one of the first things we did was get an autumn wreath. We'd never had a wreath in autumn before, but I'd always wanted one and with our new countryside setting, it seemed very fitting. I boxed away the wreath last year in the hopes that it would dry out some more and we could use it again this year. The majority of the wreath was actually made from dried foliage, but there were some fresher pieces with berries interwoven throughout, which have since dried out nicely. So this can be a wreath that we can reuse year after year. Now, as we recently had a new front door installed, the wreath hanger that we had no longer fits. And to be honest, I'm not keen on the bit that's always visible at the top. Even on the transparent ones, you can still see it. So I bought some no damage command hooks so that I could hang the wreath exactly where I wanted it on the door and there wouldn't be any visible strings or hooks. These command products are really easy to use and I know they're very popular amongst renters because they cause no damage when being peeled off after use. So they're really great for a multitude of purposes. So basically you take one of the sticky strips, peel off the backing and attach it to the surface. In this case, our front door. Press down firmly so that you get a really good hold and then peel off the top film. Press the hook onto the sticky surface and hold for about 30 seconds. 
Then you're supposed to leave it for an hour so that it has time to get that firm grip to the surface without introducing any weight. Once the hour is up, you can then hang whatever it is on the hook or hooks. The ones I use hold a weight of up to 900 grams, which is ideal for a lightweight, natural dried wreath like this, but you could add additional hooks to distribute the weight load or use one of the more heavy duty options. Now it wouldn't be autumn without some pumpkins, and this year I have admittedly gone a little crazy with them. I started by giving them a wash to clean off any dirt because I wanted to try painting some of them. I've never done this before, in fact I've never really done any kind of pumpkin display aside from the odd carved pumpkin for Halloween, but I have seen painted pumpkins on Pinterest and I think that they look great. Now I didn't buy any specialist paint, so in a couple of weeks we'll see if that was an error or not. Instead, I just used some of the interior paint that we already had from painting various areas inside the house. Ideally in the future when I have more time and less renovation projects going on, I'd love to create some reusable pumpkin decor that we can whip out every autumn season to avoid having this pumpkin waste. But that's a DIY task for next year. Now that we have our new door, we actually have a nice little entrance area. So this year I wanted to get a little bit carried away with some autumnal door decor. And this is where my army of pumpkins came into play. I wanted to flank both sides of the door with a pumpkin arrangement, not matching but very similar, using various sizes of pumpkins, both painted and not painted. I also had a tiny little stool which I painted black, again with some existing paint we already had, and added to the right side to adorn with, you guessed it, some more pumpkins and a squash. Now I have sealed the bottoms of the pumpkins using PVA glue, but as this is the first time that I've ever done anything like this, I'm not sure how well they're going to hold up when eventually they start to soften. So I'll let you guys know how they fare in a few weeks, but for now I'm really happy with how this turned out and every time we come home it makes us both smile as we walk up to the front door. And finally, I added some little hints of autumn inside the house. I didn't want to go too crazy because I think I used all my crazy and excessiveness on the outside display of pumpkins. So in the lounge, we have some shelves to the side of our fireplace, which always has a few pots and vases on. Normally empty, but with this one, I just added some dried wild daisies. They reflect a lot of the countryside surroundings at the moment as the summer flowers have all dried up and they just give off some autumn vibes. In the kitchen we have a long shelf above the sink and I usually pop some kind of dried foliage in this little vintage vase at the back. So I'm swapping out the dried eucalyptus which I'll actually keep for any potential Christmas decor and I replaced it with this dried lagurus which is more commonly known as bunny or hare's tail because the ends are all soft and fluffy. I had a little painted munchkin pumpkin left over so I added that to the shelf as well. My friend Debs recently made some upcycled pumpkins out of old jumpers and she gave this one to me so I wanted to have it somewhere where I could see it every day which naturally is under the TV on the built-in shelves that Simon and I made in October last year. That was actually our first project in this house. Just going back to flowers for a moment because this arrangement really started to bloom after about a week. And as you can see, there are some lilies in there. Now I love lilies. They're by far one of my favorite flowers, but their pollen does stain. So once the lilies have opened, I just snip off the pollen stems so that we can enjoy the flowers without the fear of any stains. To make my Freddy's flowers last longer, one tip I read in my last delivery was to cut the stems at an angle as you would do when first arranging the flowers every few days along with a water change. With each box of flowers, you also get a couple of food sachets, so be sure to mix that in with the fresh water so your flowers will continue looking fresh. And just as a little reminder, the discount code and link to get 50% off your first two deliveries and a free classic vase is down in the description box. 
So, my scented candles had a couple of weeks to cure, so I brought them back out and finished the process by removing my makeshift wick centralizer, aka string. And once the string and tape was removed, then I cut the wicks down so that they were ready to light and fill the house with the scents of the season. One final task was to top up our log supply at the side of our fireplace. Back in the summer, Simon and I made two external log stores, one for our outdoor logs for the garden fire pit and one at the entrance, which houses our maple logs. And these are the logs that we use inside on the log burner. Now I covered this DIY over on Instagram for anyone that might be interested. Whilst the logs are functional, we need them for the log burner obviously, I also love the aesthetics of having them on display next to the fireplace. It just gives me all of the autumn feels. Now I did this process over the course of a couple of weeks as and when I had some free time to do so. But now we can light the candles for the first time, get cozy in some cashmere and snuggle under some blankets and enjoy the autumn nights ahead. Thank you very much as always for watching. Happy autumn, happy Halloween, and I'll see you next time.